After paying her fare, Rosa took a seat in the middle section of the bus. That was allowed, as long as there were no white people to occupy them. She sat next to a black man. Two black women were sitting across the aisle. At the next stop, some white people got on and filled up the remaining seats. But one man was left standing. The driver looked back and saw him. Let me have those seats. Nobody moved. You all better make it light on yourself and let me have those seats. The two women across the aisle and the man sitting next to Rosa got up. But Rosa didn't. I thought about all the nights my grandfather had to keep a gun by his side to protect his family from the Ku Klux Klan. And all the times I had been mistreated. And I decided I would not get up. And people would like to say it was because I was tired. But that isn't true. I wasn't any more tired than I usually was at the end of a work day. No, I wasn't tired physically. The only tired I was, I was tired of giving in. Are you going to move? No. They'll have to have you arrested. You may do that. Eventually, two policemen came. They asked Rosa why she wouldn't get up. Why don't you do as you're told and get up? Why you all push us around? I don't know. But the law is the law, and you're under arrest. Rosa was arrested and taken to jail. Then she was given a date for her trial and released. News of what happened spread quickly. You have to understand that probably no segregation law angered black people in Montgomery more than bus segregation. The indignity of having to ride segregated buses was very humiliating. The NAACP had wanted to challenge the bus laws for many years. Now they had their opportunity. The next day they called for all blacks to boycott the buses on the day of the trial to show support for Rosa. At church on Sunday, the day before the trial, most of the black ministers spoke about the boycott from their pulpits. Notices were posted around the city and in the newspaper. The black-owned taxicab companies agreed to pick up passengers at the bus stops so people could get to work. But no one was sure if the boycott would be successful. We didn't know how many people were willing to take part in such a protest. Well, Monday morning, the day of the trial, we had our answer. The buses were practically empty. People had finally had enough. It was a surprise to everybody, I think. It was certainly a surprise to me. While the boycott went on outside, inside the courthouse, Rosa had her trial. As expected, she was found guilty of violating the segregation laws. The fine was $10 plus $4 in court costs. Later that day, the city's black leaders formed a new organization, the Montgomery Improvement Association. They chose as their president a young pastor who was new to Montgomery, the Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr. That night, the association held their first meeting at the Holt Street Baptist Church. No one knew how much support there would be. The turnout was astonishing. The church filled up and hundreds more people stood outside. They had to set up loudspeakers so that the people outside could hear what was going on. The most important decision to be made was whether or not to continue the boycott if the city council did not accept certain demands to end segregation on the buses. Those who were in favor of continuing the boycott were asked to stand up. At first, only one or two people got up. Then more and more got up until finally every single person in that church was standing and shouting, yes! A few days later, the association presented three demands to the Montgomery City Council and the bus company. Each demand was turned down. So, the boycott began. It went on for 13 months. Instead of riding the buses, people walked or took cabs or shared rides. 
a lot of people lost their jobs, including me and Parks. In February 1956, the city found an old law that said that boycotts were illegal. Martin Luther King and some others, including Rosa, were arrested. Well, by this time, the Montgomery boycott was starting to attract attention around the country. The picture of me being fingerprinted was on the front page of the New York Times. All of these arrests brought a lot more attention to Montgomery, the boycott, Dr. King, and Rosa Parks, some of it violent. There were death threats and bombings, but no matter what the other side did, the protesters never used violence. Soon, other black communities decided to follow Montgomery's example. So there were bus boycotts in places like Birmingham, Alabama and Tallahassee, Florida. While all of this was going on, Rosa's case was moving through the courts. Eventually, the case reached the Supreme Court. On November 13th, 1956, the court ruled that the law under which Rosa Parks had been arrested was unconstitutional. Segregated buses became a thing of the past. Nine years later, President Lyndon Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Segregation in all public places was officially illegal everywhere in America.